Hey there, fellow time travelers. Welcome back to Timeless Sagas, where we dive deep into the fascinating stories of our past and explore how they continue to shape our present. Today, we're going to take a ride through history on a four-wheeled plank that has captured the hearts and minds of millions. That's right, we're talking about the fantastic world of skateboarding. Now, I know what you're thinking, skateboarding? Really? What's so historical about that? Well, my friends, you're in for a treat because the story of skateboarding is one of innovation, rebellion, and a whole lot of fun. So, strap in, or should I say, strap on your helmets? As we ride the wave of history to discover the origins of this popular pastime. Our journey begins in the sunny state of California, in the late 1940s and early 1950s. The cool kids of the time were into a little something called surfing. You know, that sport where you ride a board on the ocean waves? Well, the surf scene was booming, and the laid-back vibes of the beach were all the rage. But what do you do when the waves are flat, and you still want to ride? Enter the skateboard's humble beginnings, a simple wooden plank with roller skate wheels attached. That's right, the first skateboards were more or less homemade contraptions. These early sidewalk surfers would imitate their ocean-based counterparts by carving and cruising on the paved streets of their neighborhoods. By the late 1950s and early 1960s, skateboarding caught the attention of entrepreneurs, who began manufacturing and selling skateboards as a consumer product. Companies like Roller Derby and Maka started producing skateboards with press layers of wood, similar to today's decks, and clay wheels. This period also saw the birth of the first-ever skateboard competition, held in Hermosa Beach, California, in 1963. Contestants participated in events like slalom, freestyle, and downhill races, some things never change, huh? However, the first wave of skateboarding's popularity began to wane by the mid to late 1960s. The sport had gained a bit of a dangerous reputation, with many accidents attributed to the primitive equipment and lack of safety gear. Parents and authorities started cracking down on skateboarders, and the sport went underground for a while. But don't worry, skateboarding was about to make a massive comeback in the 1970s, and that's where our story gets really interesting. You see, there were two critical innovations that changed the game forever, urethane wheels and the invention of the kicktail. First, let's talk about those wheels. In 1973, Frank Nassworthy introduced the Cadillac urethane wheel, which provided much better traction and a smoother ride than the old clay wheels. This invention allowed skateboarders to take their skills to new levels and try out more advanced maneuvers, and it also made skateboarding a whole lot safer. Now, onto the kicktail. For those unfamiliar, the kicktail is the curved, upward-sloping end of a skateboard deck, which allows skaters to lift the front of the board off the ground and perform tricks. This essential component was introduced by Larry Stevenson, the founder of Maka Skateboards, in 1969. The kicktail revolutionized the sport, opening up a whole new world of possibilities for creative expression on a skateboard. With these innovations in place, skateboarding exploded in popularity throughout the 1970s. This period also saw the birth of the first skate parks, where skaters could go to ride specially designed ramps and bowls. The introduction of vertical skating, with pioneers like Tony Alva and Stacey Peralta taking their boards to the sides of emptied swimming pools, pushed the boundaries of what could be done on a skateboard even further. During this time, skateboarding was still very much rooted in its surf culture origins. Skaters would often take inspiration from their favorite surfers, trying to emulate their style and moves on the concrete waves. However, this was about to change, as skateboarders started to develop a unique identity and subculture apart from their beach-dwelling cousins. Enter the 1980s, the golden age of skateboarding. This decade saw the rise of street skating, with skaters like Rodney Mullen and Mark Gonzalez taking their skills from the ramps and bowls of the skate parks to the urban landscape. A new generation of skateboarders was born, using the city as their playground and challenging the notion of what skateboarding could be. The sport became more technical, with the invention of tricks like the ollie, kickflip, and heel flip. The 1980s also saw the rise of skateboard companies like Powell Peralta, Vision, and Santa Cruz, which not only produced skateboards and equipment but also sponsored teams of professional skaters. Skateboarders were now heroes, with their own unique style, attitude, and language. The influence of skateboarding was so strong during this time that it even found its way into mainstream media, with films like Thrashin' and Gleaming the Cube hitting the big screen. But as we all know, nothing gold can stay. The 1990s saw a decline in skateboarding's popularity, partly due to a recession and the closure of many skate parks. 
However, the sport continued to evolve during this time, with the rise of new disciplines like vert and street skating and the introduction of the X Games in 1995, which provided a platform for the sport to be recognized on a global scale. And that brings us to the present day. Skateboarding has come a long way since its humble beginnings as a surfer's pastime. Today, it's a multi-billion dollar industry, with professional skateboarders enjoying lucrative careers and legions of fans. Skateboarding has even made its way into the Olympics, with the sport debuting at the Tokyo 2020 Games. So, there you have it, a whirlwind ride through the history of skateboarding. From a simple plank with roller skate wheels to a global phenomenon, skateboarding has shown that it's a sport that's here to stay. It's a testament to the power of creativity, innovation, and the human spirit, proving that sometimes, all it takes is four wheels and a board to change the world. And that's it for this episode of Timeless Sagas. If you enjoyed this journey through the history of skateboarding, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more fascinating stories from our past. Until next time, keep riding the waves of history.